Thank you. I was surprised and very flattered when uh, radio stated that they had named themselves af after a song that I'd written. Uh, but I, <laughs> I had to ask myself, why that song? It, <laughs> it really, I, I still haven't been able to figure it out. Uh, and in a certain way, I don't want to know. This was a kind of goofy Tex-Mex song that I'd written. Uh, maybe we'll find out, who knows. Uh, thankfully, I'm a huge fan of the group. They richly deserve this honor for two reasons. Their music, the quality and constant innovation in the music, but equally for the innovations in how they release their work and how they market it and get it to the public. Things that have changed the entire music business, and there's quite a few people in the music business in this room tonight. Uh, they're creative and smart in both areas, which is a kind of rare combination for artists, not just then or now, but anytime. Okay, here's a tidbit. Uh, <laughs> Radio One, that's in the UK, refused to play their song Creep because they found it too depressing. <laughs> then it started getting played in lots of other places all around the world, and eventually, of course, the rest is, well, we know. Okay, here's another tidbit. Uh, sorry about this, if there's anyone directly affected by this one. Capitol Records felt that what might be considered, what many considered to be their masterpiece, OK Computer, was <laughs> to uh, Capitol's ears, career suicide. And they adjusted their marketing and release plan accordingly. The record went to number one in the UK, and Paranoid Android, the song from that record, was by some considered the new Bohemian Rhapsody. <laughs> Whatever that means, I'm looking forward to the movie and looking forward to finding out who's going to play Tom, the blonde Tom, or the present day Tom, but we'll find out. For me, the record that really kind of was my conversion moment was Kid A, the record that came after that. Um, don't applaud to me, I didn't do it. It's not my fault. Uh, this record joined together a lot electronics and song forms in, in ways that uh, I had certainly never heard before. I'd never heard anything like it. I thought it was great. I could hear influences from Can from Miles Davis in kind of his electric period, but this was something altogether different. What was really weird and very encouraging was that it was popular, it was a hit, and which to me proved that the artistic risk paid off, and it proved that music fans sometimes are not stupid. <laughs> uh, some of that can be attested to by some of the music in this room tonight. But it went to, this record, as risky and ex as quasi-experimental as it was, went to number one in the US. Business-wise, they were already uh, innovating. That record was released as an app. This was in the year 2000. You could stream the record through the app and access things, but okay. Now, with uh, a few records later, with In Rainbows, they made a big, yes. The, uh, the, music, the music that at one point sounded radical and kind of on the edge, now to us, us as fans and listeners, felt completely natural. Uh, but at that point, they took the radical leap of uh, selling the record for the price of pay what you wish. Uh, which, yes, the public, we could either pay zero or maybe one cent, or you could pay the price of, that the records were going for that year. It turned out that most people did pay the going rate. Some people actually paid more than, than what the going rate of what an album cost, which was, I thought this was an incredible thing. They showed trust 
in the audience, trust in the public, trust, they trusted them to place value on their music and say, you tell us what you think it's worth. And the audience responded and said, we think it's worth something. Um, in this age, when there's so little trust in the world, uh, this was a kind of wonderful social experiment, not just a, an experiment in the music business. It has kind of a wider thing. I thought it was very hopeful. Okay, further release innovations, uh, they released the James Bond theme Spectre, which was never used on, on, uh, on SoundCloud. And musically, they kept changing. Their last record, Moon Shaped Pool, to me, sounded, like, sounded very cinematic. It sounded like a movie in your head, in my head anyway. They changed our idea of what popular music can be and how it can be released and how it can be marketed to us. For those things, I would like to be, on I would love to be honored to induct Radiohead into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. <laughs> 